My daughter Grace and I just recently went to a used bookstore where we live and I thought I would share the pile of books that I got. I had planned on going in there and getting nothing, but obviously that does not work when you go to a used bookstore and you are a book lover and a homeschool mom. So I have lots of different types of books here. I have some picture books, some poetry books, some rhyming books, um, some fun books, and then some read aloud books or some like books, chapter books that the kids can read themselves. And I have a couple of graphic novels. So I'm going to share all of that with you while Cooper takes a little nap behind me. So the first two books that I have here are both alphabet books, and I thought I could do these with my youngest son. He is six, but he's in second grade this year. So the first one is the May I Have a Word. This is by Karen Lewis, or Levis, I'm sorry, Karen Levis. And I thought this one was just really cute. It goes through all of the different letters. So like it starts out on the, so they're all like magnets, like refrigerator magnets. So it says, once upon a refrigerator, the letters of the alphabet gathered together to tell a story. What should our story be, or I'm sorry, whom should our story be about, wondered W. And then it goes through with all of the different letters, kind of telling who they think the story should be about. Um, I just thought it was really cute for kids. I really liked it. So I thought that my son Eric would really enjoy this book. I like that it has bright colors. I like that it's kind of geared for younger children and it's really cute. So I'm going to go ahead and read. I'm going to go ahead and read this book with him sometime soon. And then I also got this other book that is about the alphabet. And this is called The Disappearing Alphabet. And this one is actually really educational. So um, let me open it up for you. So it says, if the alphabet should disappear, some words would soon look raggedy and queer. Like squirrel. I'm sorry. I, I read it correctly, but it's not correctly. So if you were to take out the S in squirrel, it would be quirrel. Or if you took out the H in chimpanzee, it would be himpanzee or the choo-choo tray without the N. While others would entirely fade away. And since it is by words that we construe the world, the world would start to vanish too. Good heavens, it would be an awful mess if everything dissolved into nothingness. Be careful then, my friends, and do not let anything happen to the alphabet. So anyway, I thought this was super, super cute. So I'm just gonna open up here. So here's like the letter C. It says, if there were no such thing as C, whole symphonies would be off key. And under every nut tree, you'd find hip monks gathering winter food. Isn't that cute? I just can imagine my kids laughing, but it's also just really helpful when they're learning their phonics and learning how to read. So I thought this would be super cute to share with my younger kids. Honestly, I think even my teenagers would probably get a kick out of this book. It is, it is just really, it's funny and I love that it has a rhyme scheme. I just think it looks really great. So this is The Disappearing Alphabet by Richard Wilbur, illustrated by David Diaz. And then I have a couple of books here that are more geared towards my youngest child. Like I said, he's six. This one just looked so sweet. It's Pup and Bear. And I think this is, yeah, this is from the Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. But let's see, on the back it says, I am not your mother, said the polar bear, but I can cuddle you and keep you safe. So I know my six-year-old, he is a cuddle bear. So he will love this book. But I just thought it was really pretty too. I really like the illustrations. So this is by... Can you see that? It is by Kate Banks, illustrated by Nako Stoop. So whoosh, when the great owl, great gray owl swooped down, screeching, hoo, hoo, the Arctic wolves knew that the big freeze was on its way. Isn't that pretty though? I just really like these illustrations. So throughout the book, this bear is taking care of this little pup, and he constant or she constantly says, I am not your mother, but it's like, I am not your mother, but I can cuddle with you. I am not your mother, but I can show you how to catch a fish. I am not your mother and I know it's time for you to go. And so once the pup has grown up into a wolf, it has to go out on its own into the wide world. And then one day the wolf comes upon a polar bear cub and then the whole story kind of circles all around. I think it's beautiful. I really like this story. So I'm sure a lot of people have this book already since it's in that imagination library, but we did not have this and I just love it. And then I got this book. Flatfoot Fox in the Case of the Missing Eye by F. Clifford, illustrated by Brian Lies. So I don't know. I, I looked through this really quickly in the bookstore and I thought it looked really cute. So even, even this here is super cute. Flat Fox, the smartest detective in the whole world. And a bunch of his letters are all mixed up and backwards. So this book is in smaller chapters. There are six chapters. So I know this is going to be perfect for my younger son to read with me because he gets overwhelmed if he has to read a lot all at once. So if he knows he just has a few pages in a chapter to read, he will definitely like this. So this is a book that I'm going to have my six-year-old read to me.
And then this book I thought looked really interesting. So it's called Juan Verdades, The Man Who Couldn't Tell a Lie by Joe Hayes, illustrated by Joseph Daniel. I don't know what because it's cut off. <laughs> Let's see. It is illustrated by Joseph Daniel Fiedler or Fiedler. So let me read you the back. He has never told me a lie, says Don Ignacio about his worker Juan Verdades. In this tale of old Mexico, Juan is in charge of Don Ignacio's famous apple tree. Don Ignacio bets his whole ranch that Juan is honest, but the beautiful Araceli and her father are sure they can trick Juan. Will Juan tell the truth or will Don Ignacio lose his ranch? The story proves there is more than one way to tell the truth. And then there was something I read that said it was kind of like the um, Mexican version of like Johnny Appleseed. So I, I don't know. I haven't actually read the whole book, but I thought it looked just thought it looked really good. So I am excited to share this with my kids. I don't know when we're going to read it yet, but we'll read it at some time during our school year. Okay, now we're going to move on to a different set of books. I have some poetry books, and then I think there's just one rhyming book here, but I love me some Jack Perlutsky. So this is Jack Perlutsky's It's Raining Pigs and Noodles, and these are some of our favorite poems to read during poetry tea time because they are hysterical. It's like a Shel Silverstein type of thing, but not quite. So like this one is never, never disagree. Never, never disagree with a shark beneath the sea, lest you feel a sudden crunch and discover you are lunch. Isn't that cute? See, these are the kind of poems that like I love for my kids to go through this book. When we do poetry tea time, I will have them pick a poetry book and they go through the book themselves and decide what they, they want to read out loud to us. So I'm not the only one who reads poetry during poetry tea time. So anyway, this one, I know I know this is going to be great because Jack Perlutsky is fantastic. Then Margaret Wise Brown, I'm sure we all know her. This is Under the Sun and the Moon and Other Poems. And I had never seen this book before. And so this is just a collection of poems. I loved this one because it's so bright and colorful. So that's from, the horn, from a hornet's nest. Mouse of my heart. Mouse, mouse, why do you start timid and shy as a human heart? Mouse, mouse, where do you glide like a soft gray shadow trying to hide? Mouse, mouse, where is your den far from the eyes of cats and men? Anyway, this is one of those that I know my kids will absolutely love. It's so pretty. Drowsy little bumblebee. Drowsy little bumblebee, come and rest your wings on me. No more humming in the sun. Stars come out and day is done. Oh, that's so sweet. It would be like really sweet to put up in like a bedroom. A nursery or something like that. And then I got this one called, this is heavy, it's called Beastly Feasts, A Mischievous Menagerie in Rhyme by Robert L. Forbes, drawings by Ronald Cyril. Anyway, this one looked super cute. And so <laughs> this is the best part. The back of the book, it is what the book's toughest, cri toughest critics have to say. The alligator says, this book is delicious. It makes me hungry just reading it. Are there any kids around? Babu the chef, I'm on my way to landing my own cooking show on TV. Thanks for the publicity. So it's just like the characters from the book are the ones who do the reviews on the back. I mean, how creative is that? That's just so cool. I just think this looks so cute. Totally the type of book that my kids would love to read. I haven't read this one yet. So this one's called The Conservative Lobster. A conservative lobster was friend Ned, who quite believed better dead than red. Ironic is not as he slid into the pot, said Ned. I end up red when I am dead. The unfluttery butterfly. <laughs> oh my goodness. How funny. Oh, this book is so funny. I love getting silly poetry to go along with some of the more serious poetry that we have. Here's Dizzy Lizzie. A giraffe I know, my friend Lizzie, who has the nickname Dizzy. Her neck is very, very tall. So tall she towers o'er us all. She's so tall it makes her proud, for only she can eat a cloud. Anyway, I just thought this looked really cute. Perfect for poetry tea time for our family because we just like to laugh. And then these two books my daughter picked up, and these are just for fun. It's this one, the animal, oh, not the animal. <laughs> I was thinking because it had the animal on it that it was an animal almanac. It's just an almanac from 2021. Um, anyway, she they were looking through this at breakfast this morning. They were just like sharing the different things that they saw in it. So it's just like any old almanac that you would get for your kids from National Geographic. But super fun, brand new. I don't, I don't really understand why this was in the used bookstore, but I will take it. And then the other one that we found, which is also by National Geographic, is National Geographic Angry Birds, 50 True Stories of the Fed Up, Feathered, and Furious. I actually found this one, and I was like, you need to check this one out. And so it just has all of these different stories about birds, um, just interesting stories. So this one's really cool. This was just two bucks, so definitely worth it.
Now let me move on to a few books that I picked up for Eric. So Eric and I just read, Eric is my six-year-old. He's in second grade. We had just read the book, The Littles, and he loved it so much that he asked me to buy any that I could find there. So I found four more books about The Littles. So we found The Littles and The Surprise Thanksgiving Guest, The Littles Go Exploring, Littles to the Rescue, which we've already started, and The Littles and the Trash Tinies. So anyway, these are normally $4 and we got them for $1.50. So totally worth it. And I will be reading those with him this school year. And then for my older, my middle two boys, not my older boys, my middle two boys who are in fourth and fifth grade, I got these two graphic novels. I honestly don't know anything about these. I just quickly looked through them and it's called Hilo, The Boy Who Crashed to Earth. And it is a graphic novel. They like to read these kinds of book, books at bedtime. And so um, I just let them keep a bunch of graphic novels in their room. And I got that one, which is The Boy Who Crashed to Earth. And then this is Saving the Whole Wide World. This is book two. That is, I think it's book one. Yeah, it's book one. Um, they didn't have any other ones there. But anyway, it's a nice hardcover book, graphic novel. I'm sure my boys will, even, even Eric, our youngest, would probably like to kind of just thumb through it and see. But anyway, this is by, is it Judy? Oh, no, Judd. Judd Winnick. So the Hilo Books by Judd Winnick. Like I said, I don't really know that much about them. I just kind of looked through it quickly. And then my daughter picked out um, this book called um, Ginger Dog Diary. She actually picked up another dog diary book, which was by, um, who is this by? Kate Klimo. Um, she picked up another one and then she saw that they had a golden retriever version. And so she exchanged it and got the golden retriever one again. Actually, she started reading this in the store and it came with a bookmark in it. Oh, <laughs> it says I had fun once. It was awful. It has the grumpy cat on it. Um, anyway, that just came in the book. So, um, yeah, this has, it has some illustrations in it. And then it's just a story about a golden retriever living the good life. And, oh, it's from the perspective of the golden retriever. So my name is Ginger. This is my tale. I'm a golden retriever living the good life. I have a family, including a cat, who love and take good care of me. But my life hasn't always been a bowl of kibble. I was born in a place called a puppy mill. Here's the story of how I got from there to my forever family. So again, this is a whole series. So there are a bunch of other dog diaries books. And then... She picked up this book, which I honestly know nothing about. And it's called The Nest. Can you see The Nest by Kenneth Opal? Is that how you say that? He is apparently the international bestselling author of The Boundless. I don't know what this book is about. Uh, so hopefully this is appropriate. It has, I don't know if you can tell, like those uneven pages. I love books that have those uneven kind of ripped feeling pages. Um, it's a nice hardcover book. And um, the back just says, I thought it was just a dream anyway. I thought it has no power over me. I thought, why not? Fine, I whispered. So it seems kind of mysterious to me, but it's called The Nest. And then this is the last book that I picked up. It was on like a display case and it's called Celeste's Harlem Renaissance. Big dreams have small beginnings. And this is written by Eleonora E. Tate. And um, I really, I, well, so I, I love the Harlem Renaissance uh, when I learned about, po I, have a, I have an English education degree. I don't know if I told you guys that. And I loved the Harlem Renaissance. And so I saw the words Harlem Renaissance and I was like, oh, I want to see what that is. So um, it is about a little girl named Celeste who is forced to live with her actress aunt in Harlem. And she's not thrilled to treat her friends and comfortable North Carolina surroundings for a big, scary city life. However, she quickly discovers things are not as they seem. When Cel while Celeste absorbs the excitement of the Harlem Renaissance, she sees as much grit as she does glamour. A talented violinist and aspiring doctor, she must eventually face a choice between ambition and loyalty, roots and new horizons. The decision will change her forever. So I thought this sounded amazing. Um, I don't honestly know that much about it, but I thought it sounded really good. So I will be reading this probably just with all of the kids, um, even if my older ones want to listen as well. So this sounded really good. Um, but that was it. This is everything that I picked up. I always end up buying so much more than I had planned, but I mean, some of these are just silly, fun books. I love having 
any type of book that can just sit around. The kids can pick it up and look through it whenever they want. And all these poetry books will definitely be using during our poetry tea time. So I thought I would just share this with you. So if you'd love to see a video about our poetry tea time, I have one for you. Go ahead and check it out. And I will definitely be making more videos that kind of share our homeschool day in the life uh, routines and schedules and what we do for morning time, what we do for poetry tea time, all those types of things in upcoming videos. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.